Hello friends, welcome back to another video. My name is Kayla if you're new here. This week I am super busy so I thought I would film another week in my life and I heard that you guys really liked seeing the behind the scenes just outside of my market life. So yeah, today is Monday and I have today off from work at the hospital so I need to get a lot of things done for my small business. I cannot believe that it's already mid-September. Like where did the time go? I'm I'm honestly feeling a little bit nervous because this time of year is pretty much the busiest time for small businesses that sell candles like myself. So I'm starting to ramp up for the holiday season and honestly I am feeling a little bit overwhelmed. This weekend I am heading to Edmonton for the Edmonton Expo which is like a very big anime convention in Edmonton and so I'll be vending there from Friday, Saturday and Sunday and so that alone I need a lot of stock for and that's like not including online orders and also other markets that I have coming up. It's currently 10.15 a.m. I woke up actually at 8 o'clock today and I was ready to go and then I just fell back asleep. I think my body just needed some rest so it's a little bit of a later start to the day but that's okay. I think this video will be a little bit longer um, so if you guys wanted just to play this in the background while you're doing your own work, um, feel free because I typically do that for myself. I've been watching a lot of podcasts or listening to a lot of podcasts and yeah, it's just really fun to have someone to kind of keep you company while you're doing your own work. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my agenda out and plan the day so that I have some kind of structure and I know what I want to get done. Okay, I got this planner recently from Min Playing, Shop Min Playing, or her name is Su Min in real life. And I'll leave her Instagram in the link down below, but I thought this was super cute. It just has like a weekly calendar and then I can tear off the pages once that week is over. And I find that this just helps me keep a little bit more organized because I can see the week in a glance. I started writing down a couple of things already that I already know I have this week. For example, I have work at the hospital on Wednesday, and then I start my new pottery course on Thursday, so I'm super excited for that. I do have a couple online orders that I need to pack and ship out today, so I'm going to do that. I'm also in the middle of planning my holiday collection, so I know I haven't really shown you guys any of the behind the scenes. It's because I'm still finalizing what I want to do. I'm really excited for it, and I hope that you guys will be too. I'm planning on releasing it mid to end of October, the same time as my other job, and it is a form of a gift set. So keep that in mind because I'm creating a lot of new products that I've never done before, and I think this is a good taste test to see what I like creating and what you guys also like. I think it will be a good time to debut a gift set during the holiday season especially. It's like a very easy gift to just grab and go. Especially if you have someone who you're not really sure what to get them, having a little bit of everything um, gives them a little bit of a trial. So I'm going to start packing some online orders. The first order I got was a repeat customer, so thank you so much. She literally just bought the new collection and her family already loved the scent so much that she um, reordered already. So that is so crazy to me. I have the box here. I just added some packing peanuts in the bottom and then I'm going to add some tissue in here. What I do is every candle comes with these reusable bags that I've hand stamped my logo on. So these are the ones that this person has ordered. She did find my gingerbread and my apple pie candles that are still on my website. So somebody seems to be getting ready for fall, which I love. So I'm just putting these in here.
still using the same care cards as usual with the thank you on the back. And I like to write their name just underneath the space here. Packing peanuts on top. I will write their name on here. recently decided to switch over my POS system. I usually use Square and Square has been really good. I had no issues really with it. It's just the fact that my website uses Shopify. So I have no idea why I had one Square reader for in-person sales and then I was using Shopify for my website. So I went on Facebook Marketplace and I happened to find someone selling the Shopify POS reader and it was $10. So I just picked it up and I'm going to see if I can set it up today. And the reason why I want these to be similar for my online store and in person is mostly due to inventory issues. I've run into a couple instances where I was selling at a market and then I also got an online order and it led to me overselling. If I just use like the same system, this will hopefully sync to my website and I won't have that issue. It's also a little bit easier to keep track of my sales as well because I won't be using two separate softwares. So I have my phone here and I have the reader, so I'm gonna see how to use it. I can see a test transaction here and then it just comes up on my screen. And then if they have a card that needs to be inserted, they can just insert right to the bottom there. I think this will be really helpful for just inventory overall. I feel like it's not a good use of my time every time I come home from a market and then I have to recount everything that's on my shelf to make sure that I have the proper inventory number. Only 11.45 right now, but I feel so hungry. I also forgot about my coffee, so all the ice melted. Oops. The hardest thing I find for me right now is just keeping track of inventory and also keeping up with prediction of sales. I find that a lot of times I really underestimate myself and I feel like I undervalue myself. I don't know if you guys can relate or not as a small business, but oftentimes I feel like I'm just so small and that I'm always surprised that people are interested in my product and that they want to support me and my business and so I always make small batches of items and then it sells out and then I realize that people were actually more interested than I thought that they would be and then I run out of supplies and this is something that I've really struggled with I think even since I began to be honest because when I first started selling candles, I didn't expect to actually turn this hobby into a full-blown business. And so I remember my first market, I really just wanted to sell like a handful of candles. And I didn't really make that many to sell. And ever since then, I feel like I've always been playing this sort of catch-up game. Selling out and then buying more supplies and having people have to wait or missing out on the opportunity to have a sale at a market while I could have just had more stock made and somebody could have purchased it then. I feel right now my business is growing and I'm very happy about that. It's just I personally am having a hard time coming to terms with it and also being prepared for it. Typically I have like boxes, 45 pound boxes of candle wax just at my house ready to be used but I've been so busy just making candles for the holiday season and for my new collection that I didn't reorder any new candle wax. And so 
I need to order things now while it's still September. That way it can get here probably in about a week's time and then I can make stuff for October and November and December. The problem I had last year was that I waited too long to purchase my wax and by the time I went to the website that I normally order from, it was actually out of stock. And that was really scary because I had signed up for markets but I realized that I didn't have product to sell. So I'm going to try to avoid that this year and get a little bit ahead of the game. I order from this place in British Columbia, which is the province next to us. I've been ordering them from them since I just started doing this as a hobby back in 2020. And I've noticed that over the years, the price of wax has just gone up so dramatically. It used to be $105, I believe, for a 45 pound box of wax. And now I'm just on the website right now and it's $162 for the exact same product. Doesn't really expire, so I wish that I had just bought like a gazillion boxes of wax back in 2020. So I'm actually paying quite a lot and then shipping is super expensive because it's such a heavy item. I believe I always pay hundreds of dollars just for shipping per order that I place with this company. I really wish that there was somewhere local that sold the wax that I use but they don't and so I don't mind because I'm still supporting like a Canadian business and it's family owned as well but the shipping fee is just pretty outrageous. So a lot of the times when people at markets, like I understand as a customer, $35 is not a cheap price point for a singular candle. Um, people work really hard for their money and so I understand when they want to be cautious of what they're purchasing. But just as like a small business, I don't have the purchasing power as some wholesalers do to make these huge bulk orders and to make their average price cheaper. I'm getting off topic here. I need to order this wax before it sells out. Yeah, four boxes of wax is basically $800 after I factor in shipping, which is it's so mind boggling and it's, it's very stressful for cash flow. The holiday season, I feel like I'm putting up so much money and I'm just hoping that I will get the return back from it. I'm very lucky and fortunate that I'm still working my day job. So basically my job at the hospital will pay for all of my expenses right now. And then basically my business money, I just reinvest that money back into my business. Okay, hello, it's 1.30 and I just finished eating lunch and I decided to come out for a little bike ride because it is so nice outside today, guys. I feel like fall is finally here, so I really need to just savor the nice weather while it's here and there's no snow. So I just came to a park nearby and look how nice it is. There's literally no one here, it's just me. And I got a new bike recently, so I wanted just to come and test it out. So this is what it looks like. <laughs> Isn't it so cute? It's like a dream bike. It's got a little basket. And yeah, I'm super excited to have a bike finally. I've been meaning to get one for like two years now, but I just was putting it off. And this one was on sale at Walmart because summer is basically over. So I think it was like 60% off if you guys are interested. But I decided to bring my journal because I thought like a little lunchtime journal outside would be so nice right now. This is the journal that I have. I even got it embossed for the year. And this is from the Luxturm company. I've been using their journals for like the past five or six years. And I just really like the quality and the color range. <sighs> I needed to get some thoughts out because it's already 2 o'clock p.m. and I ended up writing like six pages in my journal today which is a lot longer than usual. 
but the sunshine is so nice i'm feeling so energized and rejuvenated i feel like this is exactly what i needed i think what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna head back home now and then i'm gonna start making some more stock i already had some candles that i poured a few days ago already so i can probably finish the tops of those while my wax is melting okay i am back home from that bike ride and oh my gosh it's been such a long time since i even rode a bike and i also forgot how hard it is to bike uphill i'm literally out of breath right now i'm gonna start melting some wax so i can get that going and then i'll probably prep the tins and then pour some candles so let's get started I am at my workstation and I'm just gonna trim the wicks on some of these candles that I poured. Don't mind my wick trimmer, it's full of wax, but it gets the job done. are all done being cured and they just look like this on the top so it's perfect i'm gonna put the lids on i have like so much supplies that you guys just don't see on camera honestly my kitchen right now has like 10 boxes of just candle tins that are ready to be poured and i also have um more supplies for my holiday collection that i need to unbox later today so it's actually pretty crazy. I didn't realize how much space I needed. Suddenly, I already outgrew my bedroom studio and I'm already using this countertop. I'm very happy that my house has this little storage area in the hallway because it does make the perfect pouring table for me. I also am switching over to a new tin. I don't know if you guys can tell on camera. So for example, this is the new tin and this is the old one. So if you put them directly side by side, the original one is actually a little bit taller but skinnier and the new one is shorter but larger width wise. They are the same um, milliliter or ounce quantity. It's just, I found that the lids for the original ones like for example, this is how the lids go on, right? But then they don't stay on. They just fall off for some reason. I was looking online at the supplier and apparently because what I use are paint cans, you're supposed to buy like paint can clips to attach to the side to keep the lid on. So I didn't really like the look of that and I thought it wasn't necessary for candles. So that's kind of why I just stuck with this. But my new candles, they actually stay on. So this is the lid on and look, isn't that magic? That's how it's supposed to be. So, and they're still pretty easy to take off too. It's not like you need um, like a flat screwdriver or something to take the lid off. So you guys will see that small change over the course of the next few months. Um, it just depends on what stock I'm pouring at the time. So there's a little bit of a change, but I don't think people really notice, to be honest, because it's the exact same design. I use the same size label and the tin finish is still the same. I like the matte finish compared to the shiny one because I noticed that sometimes when the tins are shiny, they get scratched, probably from transport. So I just like to get the matte ones and avoid that altogether. So I just, I don't know, I think these are a little bit cuter too because I feel like when it's wider, it just looks a little bit more aesthetic. 
I don't know, is that just me being biased towards my new purchase and hoping that I made the right decision? It's also a little bit easier for you guys to trim your wick as well. I do know that the diameter on this is like not bad, but having a wider diameter is just easier for you to get your wick trimmer in there as well. So that is the current situation. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys think I made the right choice. I was a little bit worried to make a change, especially because I've been using the same supplies literally since I started making candles. So changing things is a little bit scary, but all the test burns I've done on these candles, it burns exactly the same as the original. So I'm not worried about it being bad. I'm just wondering if it looks a little bit better or worse for you guys. I feel like ever since I started making candles myself, I definitely am looking into more cost efficient ways to run my business, but also things that are time efficient. I feel like when I first started, I was all about spending the least amount of money that I could. But in the long run, as I'm starting to run this business and take it more seriously, I'm realizing that sometimes it's just more worth it to invest more upfront. So for example, I would only buy like the minimum quantity of tins previously. Basically, if you purchase over five cases from Uline of these tins, you get like a price discount compared to if you just bought one. And at the time, I always just bought one to three cases because I wasn't sure how many candles I would be selling and how much demand I would have. But I just realized that over time, I could have probably saved so much money if I just bought everything in bulk. It's like the same with my thermal printer. I feel like before I would just try to save money by printing it with my normal paper printer and then I would cut out every label and use tape to put it on each parcel that I had shipped. But now that I have a thermal printer, I feel like my life cannot go back to how it was before. Like it's so fast and easy and convenient that I'm not sure why I skimped on it in the first place. I'm going to trim the minis right now. What do you think? Do you prefer this or do you prefer like the standard size candle? I prefer the standard one. I think it's just way cute on your desk or dresser or whatever. But I think this one, the sample size is a good, like obviously if you want to sample. But if you are someone like me who's a little bit indecisive, I think this one is also a good alternative because you can have a lot of different candle scents instead of just burning one for 40 hours. I wish you could smell this, but this is the cereal candle, aka the Silent Princess, and that one has always been super popular. I still need to buy the labels for these. I've already designed them. I don't know why I am so hesitant. I think it's just a lot of money up front. I'm going to put circular labels on the top, similar to like the standard ones with the 8 ounce labels. Um, but they probably just won't have as much writing on it because there's less surface area. So I think the new design doesn't have like the candle facts section on it, but it will have the title of the fragrance and also the image. Okay, I know this is crazy, but this is part of the order that came in through the mail. And it was so big that I was shocked they delivered it on a pallet to my house. And I've never imagined that I would order something that requires a pallet delivery, but here we are. So I ordered some of the typical cans that I use for the 8 ounce candles. I got some extra shipping boxes. And then on the bottom here, this is a bit of a spoiler you guys, I'm so excited. It's one gallon metal cans. And you must be thinking, Kayla, what are you going to do with a one gallon paint can? Well, let me tell you. I was debating whether or not I would tell you guys in this video, but why not? We're already here. My plan for the holidays is I wanted to create a gift set for people who don't know what to get for someone that they're shopping, or maybe they just wanted to get something to grab and go. And for the past couple of months, I've honestly been trying to brainstorm ideas for gift sets, and I've even been talking to manufacturers for shipping boxes and things, but at the end of the day, I just didn't like how any of the samples turned out. And 
I was talking to my partner and we were thinking, what if we just created a giant paint can gift box? So, okay, let me let me grab a paint can so I can help visualize it for you guys. Give me a, the paint cans come with handles, but I have to assemble it myself. So it just look like this right now. Okay, but do you guys see my vision? This is like as big as my head for size reference. Basically, I'm gonna have like a giant XL label on here that looks like my normal candles, right? Like think like here, like this big. Inside, I'm gonna fill it with goodies that would come in a gift set. So I'm thinking one standard size candle, um, a couple of the sample tins that I was prepping already, um, the wax melts, a wick trimmer, and also some other goodies. I want to keep those a secret for now, but they are in the design phase. And so hopefully I can have them designed, finalized, and also made by the end of next month. But isn't that so cute? Please tell me that this was a good investment. I think that it will be super cute once it's finished. But right now, maybe it just looks like a random paint can. I don't know. Well, yeah, with the giant paint can idea, I feel like I haven't seen anyone do that before. So I think it will be more unique to my shop. And also it's just kind of fun as a customer. I think if you get something that's a little bit more creative rather than just a box, there's nothing wrong with gift boxes. Obviously there's a reason why companies still do it, but I don't know. I think it'd be a cute display piece as well even after you've used all the items inside. It is currently 4.55 p.m. and I don't know where the day has gone. I feel like I've been busy doing tasks but I didn't get a lot of stuff done. Um, I think what I'm going to do right now is take inventory for the candles that are on the shelf behind me and then I can update my new Shopify POS app. This is so handy now that I have everything just in the same place for selling. Even like when I go on the app, it literally shows how many I have left. Two, four, six, eight, sixteen, twenty-four, thirty-two, thirty-five. Okay. Alright, happy Tuesday everybody. So the first thing that I wanted to do was to design a packing tape for my shipping parcels. I think I mentioned this in the previous video, but I did want to go through like a little bit of a branding overhaul from now till 2025 in January. And I thought since I will be getting online orders, I kind of wanted to up my ante a little bit, even if it's a slow process. So I'm currently at my desk here and I have a design that I had made. So I like to use the logos that I already have. So. This is like sideways obviously, but I have a candle and my bear mascot here and I think that this would be really cute if it was like a repeating logo and these are just like my brand colors with the beige and the pink. It is a little bit on the pricier side compared to like the normal packing tape, but I think that this could be something fun to invest in. Isn't that so cute? They have like a little mock of what it would look like. I thought that I would do a mock setup for my table display for Edmonton Expo. It's literally this Friday, so in three days. I am kind of stressed about it, but 
I'm gonna try to take it one day at a time. I realized I have a gazillion candle scents. I just keep coming out with more and I'm not discontinuing things as much as I should. So we're gonna see how I can fit literally all of these scents on one six foot table. I basically use these panel displays. I got them off of Amazon. They just look like this. And then you can kind of make them whatever shape you want using the connectors on the sides. And a lot of people in Artist Alley use these panels because they are very flat, so they're easy to put in your luggage if you're traveling, and they're also very lightweight. And I typically like to have the back side open so that I can stick stuff underneath here while I am vending, like whether it be shopping bags or extra candle stock or whatever. But I don't know. I feel like maybe I should look up some reference photos rather than just uh, doing this randomly. But it's been working for me so far. I just feel like it doesn't look the most aesthetic. I definitely like how my wooden pegboard display looks a lot more, but it's just not feasible for like traveling to events because it is so heavy. Also, I feel the pegboard, it would look better if I had more things to like hang on the wooden dowels, but I don't really have anything um, that can go vertical. I feel like all my stuff needs to be on shelving and so that makes it really difficult. So in order to display all of my candles, I basically created a separate tier on the bottom here. Previously, I only had two tiers, but now I have three. And I think that this actually looks not bad with just having one of each scent, like I did in Edmonton for Animathon. But I think this looks okay. I'm going to have also the Moon Prism just on the bottom here. And I don't have any signages for that or the seasonal scents, but I think that people will still be able to read the label and I don't think it's that big of a deal. On the table, I did get rid of the three tiers because I don't have candles that need to be displayed there anymore. So I have more room for pins, stickers, and then I'm thinking I can also add some mystery bags here. This is also what the top part looks like. So I just have my banner, my follow me sign, and also my website. And then I have some little foam characters on the top just for funsies. So I think I'm gonna put all of like the things that are movable in the zipper compartment. So like these panels, that way they don't slide out. My like pin tray, I can keep in here. Just put in a Ziploc bag for easy access. Put that in the corner. That actually fits perfect. Signages, I guess this can also go here because it's flat. And then I also have my banner, which I can just probably place on here. Yeah, that is so convenient. Um, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, thirteen. It's kind of crazy how fast this suitcase filled up. But I just put shopping bags and also the cotton bags in the side. I added some care cards and business cards as well. Hello everybody, I just got home from dinner, I'm looking so rough but I got ready for bed, I washed up and it's currently 10 o'clock p.m. I was originally just going to take the night off and take it easy because I have to wake up early tomorrow to go to work at the hospital but something in me was just thinking I should make more stock so <laughs> I have my wax melter on right behind you guys and I'm just gonna make like a small batch 
overnight so that way tomorrow it will be all set so that i can trim the wicks after i get off work this is like the real life of balancing a nine to five with my small business i feel like there's a lot of times that i have to plan around things because i am working I just brought up another case of tins from my kitchen to my little workspace in the hallway and I'm going to put some of the round safety labels on the back so let's go ahead and do that. Hey Siri, uh -huh. start a timer for two minutes. Two minutes starting now. 